What up, what up, welcome back to the channel. I'm Odai J and we are locked in. We got a new series on Netflix called The Cage. So we're gonna be actually going across the pond and heading over to France. We're gonna follow this young gentleman by the name of Taylor. It says, Taylor is dreaming of going pro. A young fighter struggles to be seen in an unexpected combat lands him a shot at a big time and a brutal rivalry in a cage. Now, basically this young man is trying to make it to the UFC and you know the story. We gotta come up out of nothing make a dollar out of 15 cents and try to make sure that our family is straight. Now, before we jump into this and we break down this Netflix series, it's only five episodes, but if you like UFC fighting, you like a nice little drama storyline, then this might be a show for you. It's only five episodes too. So if you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. And hey, we're on that road to 75,000 subscribers. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is five days, five recaps, the cage on Netflix. We start the episode off with Taylor coming out to the ring. Now what we're noticing that this is eight months later. So we're actually going to take a step back. We see him getting in the ring to what's going to be the biggest fight of his life. Eight months prior to his biggest match of his life, he's actually training. He's headed to a gym. Now there's a guy called Boss and he owns the gym. He's also the head coach of all the fighters. And we see that Taylor is showing him yesterday I had an amateur fight. I actually wanted man I could represent the gym but the trainer aka boss he's saying nah, I already have people uh, go back to training I'll talk to you later pretty much he already has an investment in other fighters within the gym we see a female trainer show up late to the gym and she's trying to get in the ring but of course boss says real fighters show up here on time you need to go over there with the amateurs so she actually goes over and she starts training with Taylor and she knows what she's doing. She's even giving him some pointers because remember, he's just an amateur boxer at this point. So she's actually got some rounds in and knows what she's doing. After his training session with Elena, he goes out and talks to Boss one more time. Listen, this is all I got. Getting the job isn't for me. Now, Boss is like, listen, I'm going to go ahead and tell you the truth. What I've seen you doing in there, you aren't prepared. I have other fighters in here that have belts, that have professional fights up under their belt, you're just not ready for it. Now, of course, this is just him and his professional expertise saying, I've seen what you got to offer and it isn't much, but sometimes you need this brutal reality. After getting told no by boss, he heads home. Now his mother's name is Isabella. And as you can see, it doesn't look like they're living very well. She's not working. Obviously they need help with the bills. He's trying to fight and pursue his dream, but he also said he'll give up fighting to get a job to help out around the house because his mom, she isn't doing anything. Now, this is her place. She should be getting up and getting a job, but he's looking to take care of his family. He wants to be able to do it by fighting and going to the UFC, but if getting a job works now, he'll take that route also. After hearing everything that his mother said, he goes and takes his protein and continues on with his night. Now, one of the favorite people he likes to watch is GSP, George St. Pierre, one of a MMA heroes, Hall of Famers. And when he sees this, how he retired and came back, he starts hitting his heavy bag because he's upset that he might have to give up everything he's worked on because this is the one thing he figures will get him out of his situation. The next day, Taylor goes up to the gym to cancel his membership because Obviously he doesn't have the money for it and he needs to give it to his mom. Now while he's in here packing up his bags and everything, there's a gentleman by the name of Ibrahim. He walks in and it seems like Ibrahim is the big dog. Everyone stops what they're doing and they're looking. They run over, Bilal, Taylor's friend tells boss, boss, Ibrahim's in here. And Ibrahim, he's like the modern day Debo. I'm talking about he comes in here and he lays things down. Ibrahim comes in, he's sizing up everybody. Is this all this gym has to offer? These little guys, I'll beat everybody one by one, two by two. Now, boss, he's trying to hold all of his fighters back because he knows that Ibrahim is a dirty fighter, but Ibrahim is calling everybody out. And you see people acting tough, but ain't no one really trying to step in that ring. They're all like, who are you talking to? And Ibrahim's like, let's do it. Everybody's backing down. But this leaves an open opportunity. Taylor sees this and well, he doesn't have a membership. He says, I'll spar with you. So Ibrahim, he's running things. This is on a lower level than UFC. So he wants to spar with him and he'll pay him. But boss doesn't want anyone in the ring and he's telling Taylor, you don't have to do this to impress me. But Taylor ain't trying to do this to impress you. Taylor is doing this because he has 
built up a lot of negativity and he wants to release this kinetic energy on somebody and Abraham, if you want to do it, let's do it. Everyone's telling Taylor, man, we don't think you should do it, but let me tell you something. When your stomach is rumbling, bills are due, you got to take some risk. And when we get in this ring, we see Abraham warming up. I'm like, oh Lord, this is going to be ugly for Taylor. We might not make it to episode two, but the time is now. And well, the sparring session is about to begin. They get in the ring and Ibrahim's going off. I'm talking about whooping ass left, right, left, right. He's talking about, I'm paying you to box, not to run around. Get in this ring, fight. And everybody's like, come on, you got him, Taylor. Nah, it looked like he got Taylor. After all the running around and grappling, they get up. They square up. And Ibrahim's going for the knockout. Taylor steps to the side, follows through, bow, drops him. This is the first time Ibrahim has ever been dropped. Everybody's going crazy. His security rushes in. They push Taylor out the way. They got to get him up. Luckily for us, we got it recorded. Bilal put it on the boxing gym social media. So now you know this is about to go viral. Ibrahim, the big bad wolf, gets dropped by some amateur no one's ever heard of. Oh, man, this isn't a good look for Ibrahim at all. You know that ego is broken. So, of course, after that, boss comes over and says, listen, I know you're thinking about giving up around here, but I think you should stick around. Now, he's not offering him a membership. He's not offering him to be able to fight as a pro. He's just saying you can stick around the gym. You shouldn't give up fighting like this. So this is a huge step, even though boss still doesn't believe in him all the way. Everyone can get lucky. Remember, this is fighting. It only takes one lucky shot. So until you can prove yourself, you got to consider that a lucky shot. But we see that Taylor, this is what he really wants. Well, now, Ibrahim is getting ready to defend his belt. But of course, everyone's asking, hey, real quick, champ, what about that viral video going around? And of course, Ibrahim being a professional, he takes it to another level. Look, the kid was... We're just sparring. I didn't even warm up. Everyone gets lucky. But if it was a real fight, I would have dropped them. But we're not here to talk about that sparring match. We're here to talk about me defending my belt and potentially going to the UFC. So you can tell he's getting upset about it. That ego is hurt, especially by a no-name amateur by the name of Taylor. With Taylor going viral, he's getting invited to all kinds of different podcasts. Everyone wants to know, was this a lucky punch or is Taylor really like that? So while he's here, they're asking him who his favorite MMA fighter is. How did he get into it? But then they start clowning him a little bit, talking about his earlier matches when he's running around the ring. Now, the two on the right, they're talking about when you're in that cage, you can really run. Man, I don't know how you did that. So this has Taylor feeling a little bit down. The only thing is people are always going to clown you. No matter what you do, there's always going to be something funny that you did or something that you may have messed up on that people are going to laugh about. That just builds adversity. That right there builds character. So it has him a little shaken, but he stays in there. Back at the gym, Boss brings in some MMA fighters from the UFC, and they're getting a master class, basically showing you guys different moves and techniques that they use. Now, if you look in the back, you do see Elaine and Taylor. She's paying attention, but he's on his phone because he has social media virality at this point. So he's looking at this. She's like, you need to get focused. You need to be watching this master class. That social media stuff, it'll be there when we get done. These are the opportunities that you need right here. If you aren't practicing, you aren't getting better. Now, after this, Taylor is trying to seize every opportunity he can. He sees that UFC Paris is going to be over here and obviously Paris. So he's calling up people. Hey, do you got tickets for this? Do you got tickets for it? And once he gets his friend on the line, he's telling them, listen, let me get your ticket. Promise, I promise, I promise that I can use this and I'm going to make something happen because he has a plan. He wants to get seen. And plus, remember, he's viral at this moment for knocking out Ibrahim. Well, Taylor, he does the unthinkable. He makes it to UFC Paris and we find out that Ibrahim's opponent, he had to forfeit. So now Taylor is calling him out. I already laid him out once. This ain't nothing. I made the wait. I'm ready to fight. Ibrahim is hiding behind his people. Tell him I'll challenge him. So back at home, his whole crew is going crazy. Be loud. Everyone, they're going crazy. Taylor pulled this off. But Ibrahim, 
He's upset. He don't like this at all. Well, it looks like all we're waiting on is Ibrahim to answer the call. And if so, it's on. But then Taylor gets a call from George St. Pierre and he's saying, I think I got a way for us to go ahead and handle this. So he has a true Hall of Fame legend contacting him and saying, listen, I'm going to help you train for this fight if you're serious about it. All right, there you go to recap for episode one of The Cage. Let me know what you think about Taylor. Is this a story of a young man fighting from the bottom to make it to the top? Or is this going to be a story of a young man that doesn't stand attention to this cage that just has a lot of courage and a lot of bark, but no bite to back it up? Let me know what you think. I'm Mode IJ. This is day one of recapping the cage of the five day recap. Make sure you tune in tomorrow for episode two. I'm Mode IJ. If you like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.